for you, maybe that's in the polarized training spectrum is to do a lot of, as we say, 80% easier. I wouldn't do a polarized approach. It doesn't make sense. Yup, these two experts just gave me two opposite recommendations on what to do. This will be interesting. The device we use to measure lactate, as you see, it looks pretty much like the one for glucose. Allez, 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 allez. Got it, got it. Your heart rate is still a good indicator of where you are. This is so interesting. I, I now like understand a little bit more how my body works. So I would actually go with your, fully with your strengths and I would risk it all. <laughs> the better you get at your technique on bikes, the better you're able to express your fitness. For this episode, we went to Toggery Training System, the training facility of Scott McFarland. Scott is probably one of the most renowned coach we have in Canada. Over 20 of his athletes have pro cycling contracts. So Scott is definitely the right person to guide me throughout this preseason. But first, let's meet David Gecker, the scientist who will be testing my blood and help me define my training zones. So I'm David, I'm uh, working as a coach for a few years, physiologist and sports scientist at the National Sport Institute. So I studied sports science in Switzerland, a master's degree there, and that's when I started to actually do some testing uh, on athletes during an internship. A few years after my master, I just bought the, the equipment to do lactate testing, and it's like portable stuff, so we, you can basically do a test anywhere, like here in Tuggery, or we could do that like at home. What is first lactate for those who don't yeah. know what it is? How does that build up into your muscle throughout an effort? Yeah, so lactate is one of, is a, it's actually a substrate. So it's not, uh, your body always produce it yeah. and you can also use it. It's not trash, like it's not bad yeah. for you, but at the same time, the more you have in the blood, the more tired you get. And it's a good indicator of where you are in your physiologically based on your thresholds and your maximal. So basically mm -hmm. it's a good in indicator of where you're at physiologically. And what we measure is basically the result of how many you produce, but al also how many you reuse. The slow twitch fiber will reuse a lot of it and the fast twitch will produce more. So basically, as long as you keep a balance in it, it's stable in the blood. And once the intensity increase, lactate starts to build up in the, in the blood. And this is at some point when you, when it starts to rise, this is the first threshold. And when it starts to rise, I would say exponentially, this is the second threshold. And with that, you can set zones. And this is how you can know like when I'm training, what are these uh, zones in power, but also in heart rate. Mm -hmm. And we'll maybe talk about it more after the test when I present you the result. 30 watts increment every three minutes. Okay. So we start like super easy. You do a quick warm up, and then we start at like 130 watts, which is way under your first threshold. So we're sure we have a few points before your first threshold. Great, well, this sounds very exciting. I will go change, put my kit on, and uh, hop on the bike for the warm up, and we'll get started with uh, gathering the data and hopefully uh, bring some light and you know, knowledge to my, my training on how I should be doing it for the next few months. Awesome. All right, so David, now I am 10 minutes into the warm up. How, what can be and what should be a great warm up before a test like today? Well, actually, the test starts really easy, so you don't really need a big warm up because we, we do maybe at least nine or 10 minutes before it even gets to your normal, like easy power. Yeah. So even now, like with a 10 minute warm up, you don't really want to go too high in the power because then you will have lactate building up in your, in your blood and then we start the test and it's not the, the real baseline. Because the goal of the day is not for me to crush my best run test, it's to start and do the lactate, right? Yeah, actually you want to give everything. So yes, you want to have a good okay. run test, but as I said earlier, it's as the stakes are a bit longer than normal and value won't be as good as a classic run test or it's Got it. like shorter for the stages. So. Got it. Yeah. So this is the, the device we use to measure lactate. As you see, it looks pretty much like um, the one for glucose. And basically you just put the strip in. I will take a, a drop of blood on the, the finger of, uh, of Charles and you can just read the, the blood with the, the machine and in like 13 seconds, it gives the value that you need for the for every stage. So basically, in the last, let's say, 15 seconds of each uh, stage, I will take a, a measurement. And then if, for some reason, it seems off to me, I take a second one like, just after to make sure I have perfect numbers every time. All right, David, so warm-up is done. I think I'm, uh, I think I'm ready for the test. All right, we'll start that on the computer and 
and let's go. Let's, uh, let's suffer, <laughs> eh? Yeah, it's, <laughs> as I always say, it's, it's easy for a while, and it's only, I would say, six minutes of pain. So it's not too bad. It's, Good. it's not too bad. All right, let's do it. So excited. I love to get to the science and learn more about my body and about cycling in general. This is why we're doing this series, is learn and share with you guys. Oh, it's too showed up. You wanted to be in a YouTube video, yeah, huh? I'm that <laughs> and at this point, listen closely to my heartbeat. I'm going hard. And was it like six minutes of pain, as I told you? Yes. <laughs> I mean, no, I, I, it was okay until it's not. I was fine, and then suddenly, legs felt so pumped. It's it's tough. Yeah. And I think that that confirms the feeling. Like 14.6. That's that's a, I liked it. That's that's. A... <sighs> Mais c'est grand de gars que tous si on fait un test avec des poses. Ouais. Tu fais un méga méga score. Sauf qu'après, en réalité. Tu vas pas nécessairement avoir le, la perte qui fait le score. Et mec, c'est l'inverse aussi, là, là, ça va pas, euh, tu sais. En même temps, tu sens pas le profil, donc il y a d'autres qui fait des, des gros tétés. Là, non, on va pas. I don't know. On va... At least now we have the data to maybe explain what's going on and try to find a solution before the season. That's why we're here. It's the, it's the quest for speed. <laughs> Basically, I'm entering the data and then I will be able to uh, determine the first threshold graphically and then everything else is being computed like automatically and once Carl's done with the cooldown, I will have the, the results for him. Puis quoi ton poids en kilo en ce moment, c'est ça? 70. Guys, if you're excited about the result, please leave a thumbs up on this video. It helps a lot more than you can think of. All right, David, so the test is done. That was, a, a, as you said, a great six minutes of pain at yeah. the end. I've done my best. I mean, I, I could not have done any other step. I've went all, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy about my effort, but now what do you have for me? Yeah, so the, the first thing you will see on the, on the report is the, the result of the test, actually every, the power for every stage, lactate, heart rate, and the duration of the, the stages. You completed the, the last one, like the full three minutes. Yep. And as we, as we expected, I think everybody who's listening to the channel know that you have a good sprint, a good capacity to do like short bursts of power, and you're Max lactate was actually 14.6, which what, is quite high. What does that mean? It, what's, uh, is there a, a true maximum to that number? What, it, what does that mean, 14.6? Yeah, it means you are able to produce a lot of lactate, so you are able to produce a lot of energy quickly. Uh, okay. As we said earlier, it's the difference between what you produce and what we, you reuse. Okay. But somebody with like more fast twitch fibers will likely have higher numbers. Like some like elite climbers or time trialists, they may have a maximal value of like six or seven. Really? Like super low. And it's not because, oh. they, it's because probably they both produce less and we use it more efficiently because they have Cute. more slower twitch fiber. So if you take a, a true time trialist or a triathlon guy who can't do 600 watt sprint, yeah. it would not go over 10. That's where you're- Likely, like, yeah. Most likely. Most likely it won't go uh, as high as you are. You are going. And so. if you take a, a true track sprinter, 200 meter sprint, or, or these very, very short in, uh, cyclists, up to what number that can they reach? I think you can see like 20 millimole, okay. but I'm not sure like about this protocol. Even if you take somebody who's a real sprinter, maybe you don't, you don't even get there because it's too tired because you don't have the, the endurance we even get at the there. end of the test. So okay. maybe even for you, maybe if we do like a one minute all out and then we measure it after, maybe you get something even higher than this. That would be maybe <laughs> maybe we can do that. <laughs> Stay <Yeah>. tuned. <laughs> so this is the the lactate curve. So as we see, the R rate is very linear with the increase in power. Mm -hmm. So every 
every data point is uh, one stage. So I took the Two. art rate and lactate at the end of every stage. Yes. And um, as we see, like art rate max was 185. Mm -hmm. I know I can hold 180 for, I know, five minutes yeah. max. And then uh, I can, my peak is usually in that 190, 192, 93, when yeah. I'm all out after a sprint. Yeah, and as we see, like the the first threshold is basically when the, the lactate starts to uh, to increase above the baseline. Mm -hmm. And this is considered to be like the, the first threshold. So anything under that is like really aerobic. And sometimes we call the first threshold like the aerobic threshold. Yeah. Um, and then the second threshold is where it starts to go up the, like really quickly. And you can see that in your case, it's like 258 watts. Mm -hmm. So this value should be lower than the, than the critical power or even the FTP. Mm -hmm. So it's really, at this intensity, you can maintain this intensity for a long period of time without the lactate increasing. So, two so anything under 258, your okay. lactate should be stable. If I want to ride fast, but not yet into like that red zone, yeah. I can aim that in that 250, uh, 250 255, I stay under yeah. it, and I should be able to keep that for a long time. Yeah, exactly. Got and it. when we say a long time, I mean, it, it, at some point, it, let's say you keep that for one hour, which yeah. is possible, well, even more than that, but after the hour, it will off, it will get harder and the lactate yes. will still build up. Okay. And in your case, the second threshold is like 5.3, which is, uh, I would say, higher than the average person. But again, okay. as you have a, also an higher maximum, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So basically, in your case, that means uh, if you go under, as you said, like if you go 255, your lactate may stabilize at like five millimole per liter. Mm -hmm. So, so that can, can be steady for yeah. a long time. And then if you go like above, if you go like 270, it will build up quicker. Slowly, okay, yeah. got it over time. And Until point, it maxed out to yeah. 14 or... Yeah, maybe, I guess if you go like just over, it may not even build up that much, yes. but you will still have at some point, you will still not be able to keep going because it's just like you depleted all your... This, uh, this is resources. so interesting. I, I and, now like understand a little bit more how my body works. And the most important thing sometimes yeah. is the heart rate. Because yeah. this is great to have an idea of the numbers, but if you go for a six hour ride, and maybe at the end, even pushing 258 is really hard because let's say you're dehydrated or you haven't fueled enough, but your heart rate is still a good indicator of where you are. Of course, this is just a test. So like, I'm not your coach, so you can do whatever you want <laughs> with that. But yes. then the, if you take like the, the, the polarized training approach, the idea is to do like 80% of your training under the first threshold. So you would most of the time be so, under 200 watts. 80% of the time? Yeah. Under? 198 watts. I'm, I'm, that's, that's, and I, I say that, that, but basically, I, if, you, if you do like a, an easy ride, you should, it's not just to be like the average, like 197, it should be under that. And the thing is, if you want to improve the first threshold, you have to recruit the slow twitch muscles. Even though we know we, you probably have less than uh, like the, the most, the fastest guy on the Tour de France, if you want to build them and make them more uh, endurance, you need to recruit them. Mm. So you need to spend time under this intensity and this is how you build up the first threshold. Got it. People who don't have time to train a lot, they, they want to make like a, a compromise and do like more high intensity stuff. Mm -hmm. And the reality is it's, you still ideally have some kind of a balance and you can do, you can do more, but then again, in your case, as you see, like you have a really, really punchy curve. Maybe it's better to do stuff around even high intensity stuff. When you do some, the 20% left from, uh, from the 80% easy, 20% mm -hmm. hard, maybe more around threshold than super high intensity. Because you, we, you know we have you have already that, and Got it. at some point it's always a philosophy of do you train your weakness or your strength? Well, depending on where you are in the season, I guess you have to to do one or, or the other sometimes. And I think you won't lose your sprint. Like even if you do a lot of easy riding, I don't think you will lose your sprint. Great. And you always have opportunities to try your sprint anyway. So I think for you maybe that's the in the polarized training. Uh, spectrum is to do a lot of, as we say, 80% easier. And then what you do with the 20% left depends on, on the philosophy and what you want to build and your objective, what's the racing you do and, and everything. But basically mm. the, the idea of training a lot at easy uh, intensity is what seems to work for most elite cyclists, but also the people at the lower level. Then with that, we have the training zones. In this report, I have like seven zones for the power and five zones for the heart rate. 
Uh, so basically, yep. anything under the max of the test would be some, somehow anaerobic. And, and again, as I said earlier, maybe in your case, you want to do more stuff around threshold. But even if you do, let's say, three minute intervals, maybe it's better for you to do more in a session and to be more in zone five than in zone six. Because in zone mm -hmm. six, this is where you, again, you build the anaerobic power. And as we see, this will drive maybe all the curve up and the, the thresholds up. So when you do the test again, let's say you train for a few months and we do it again, what you would likely, what you want to see is the curve to slide to the right. Yes. So basically for the same lactate level, you push more, uh, let's say at 250 watts, you're still under two. Mm -hmm. So then the, it improves. And in your case, you don't necessarily need to improve the max value. Even if it goes down, actually, I think it wouldn't wouldn't hurt you. Wouldn't damage. Yeah, because the because I mean, this is an basically like it's an indicator of how much glycogen you burn. So as we say, like your <coughs> second threshold is like at five point three. So basically, even as we say, you can hold that for an hour. You will probably also use a lot of glycogen to hold that. And somebody with a second lactate like threshold at like three, and this is what you see with like elite endurance athletes is the often it's under three on the second threshold, gotcha. and they can they can maintain that for, for a long period of time. So this is basically the, the idea is to move the curve right. Mm -hmm. And maybe in your case, even move it down a bit, but this is the most important thing is to move it right. right. All right, Scott, so I would like to introduce you. You've been on the channel before, but for those who haven't uh, met you, who are you and uh, where are we today? Uh, I'm a coach here in Montreal, Quebec. Uh, I work with, I think I'm most uh, well known right now for working with a lot of riders uh, who've received contracts. I think we're up to about 15 riders who received contracts. So now that we have the data, we just, we just pull with David. How and how should I interpret the, the, the data and what should I do with it moving forward with my preseason? So the way I think of uh, lactate uh, threshold tests or lactate testing, is they just give you a profile of your own uh, lactate relevant to power output, okay? And lactate is produced primarily in your fast twitch uh, fibers, and it's cleared, uh, removed primarily by the adjacent slow twitch fibers. You know, you're very strong, you're probably an outlier strong, very good at sprinter, fast twitch stuff. So you produce a lot of lactate in these tests, but how good is your ability to clear the lactate that you're producing. So even in this test, David was saying that for your LT2, your higher uh, threshold, a lot of people consider it your lactate threshold, uh, you were already at 5.4 millimoles. Which is high. It was just high. So a lot of people will say uh, classically, usually people's LT2 is somewhere around four. So you're quite high. So I think you're producing strikingly large quantities of lactate. So that's why David was suggesting to you, you know, polarized training speaks to this kind of a profile where you have, you know, you're trying to figure out how to clear lactate. It should be, in some ways, that would be the classic approach. Mm -hmm. If I saw this profile, the rider just say, you're not clearing lactate well enough, so you have to do more endurance riding. Endurance riding starts improving your uh, cellular metabolism's ability to clear lactic acid, okay? Because the more lactate you have in your muscles, it's helping, it's producing glycogen, it's doing these things, but it's also an indicator of other things that are going on in your muscles that start restricting your ability to contract your muscles forcefully. And you experienced that in your test. You said right after your test, I felt good, it felt good. And this is typical of a maximum aerobic power ramp. I felt good and then all of a sudden it's like, boom, okay? And you just couldn't push, so your muscles, ability to contract to decline rapidly. It gives you a sense of the type, you sort of know these things already, but now it's attaching that sense of yourself as a cyclist to specific power zones yep. now, okay? That you can focus on to develop. So the, the standard response and that I would do for most people, I would say you need more endurance riding. But I would say this for you because of the things that you're trying to do in your life right now, and I think it's really important to set your goals relevant uh, relative to your activities and your time that's available and things like that. I wouldn't do a polarized approach. It doesn't make sense. It makes sense if you wanna become the ultimate performance athlete that you can possibly be on one level. But I think in your case, it's a, it's a 
you've got so many different activities going on. Your goals are, you're gonna have multiple goals going on. Okay, and a lot of them are around producing content. Yep. So they have to be exciting. And like endurance rides, well, they're, they're they, unless you're like, uh, unless you're pulling really good food out of that back pocket, you know, look at this is pancakes. This is like your, it's, it doesn't uh, work with that, with uh, your, with your work, with the things that you do to, to make a living. So I would actually go with your, fully with your strengths and I would risk it all. <laughs> I would go for uh, anaerobic reserve uh, training. So your ability to do work above threshold. So that goes all the way from maximum power out output, sprinting, five seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute. And then also in total, in particular types of exercises, how, much, how many kilojoules of work can you actually do above your threshold over a period of time. I would develop a training program for you that would be called, uh, organized around what I would call scenario-based training. You create scenarios and scenarios that work within your profile as it already is. Based on those scenarios, you can do certain kinds of workouts to prepare for it, prepare for them. You don't need huge training blocks. You need short periods and you go by from scenario to scenario to scenario. So if you're going to do something huge, long gravel, okay, then we got to do some zone two, but now we're doing it as preparation for an event. So now there's a narrative for you. It, in, it integrates more fully into your work. In my journey. Uh, yeah. Exactly. And then all of a sudden, what does come out of your pocket becomes much more important like to, to how you're fueling those kinds of things. Yeah. So now we're not thinking we're using your lactate profile as a starting point to interact with the scenarios that you're uh, creating and or entering. A less abstract sense of I train over here and then I do my job here. Think of yourself as a professional who you are. So I'm going to train for my events. How much time in advance of a specific event that I want to cover and do, how much time should I start thinking about that specific way of doing my workouts, like in terms of two weeks, four, six, eight weeks? That's a great question. I think it, it depends on your calendar of events, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, you know, so you have to have a larger macro plan for that, but something like endurance takes a while to build up. Usually the minimum you would use for that is eight to 12 weeks. I don't think that works with you. That's why like for you, it's just, it's not possible. But I think in terms of building uh, kind of a durability for you throughout all these things, for endurance, you would be doing longer rides every week, but just maybe one and slowly building it out. One longer ride and trying to figure out how you could do it and where. It would be like that kind of a manipulation. For the short stuff, you're already good at it. You would need, honestly, probably about three workouts. Okay, so you could do that in a week and a half or you can do it in three weeks. Got short, intense, just one a week. Something simple for you like that and really specific. And part of your training, scenario-based training, is not strictly power-based, uh, it's also technique-based. Yes. So you said one of the great gains you made during that uh, camp was uh, learning uh, climbing, te climbing technique. I love this approach. Yeah, you like the idea? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, like think it. It, I think it would work for you. I was, yeah, because I'm, I'm doing crits, roads, gravel, time trials, yeah. uh, Everesting. I, I ride track as well. I love the track. All the spe spectrum of cycling, and I've never really thought of working out towards the next one. And it's something I'm definitely going to keep in mind. The better you get at your technique on bikes, the better you're able to express your fitness, is, is a way that I think of it. That's good. Scott, thank you so much for all of this knowledge. And yeah. It's very appreciated. I'm sure I'm going to definitely try to use this philosophy moving forward. Scenario-based uh, training, Charles. Scenario -based, it's for you, yes. man. You're the one, actually. I mean, I'll, I'll have to come back maybe in uh, eight weeks, uh, come back and do another lactic threshold and maybe see where uh, when you sleep. Uh, if, I, if I did improve the zone moving forward, that would be, be great. great. That would be awesome. Thanks. Thanks, man. This is the type of science that is going to be required to be able to succeed at the top level. 90% of the effort is to beat the win. If you're not aerodynamic, you're just not in the game. Period. 
for today's testing, we have five different tests that we're going to compare one against the other. The point tab, the point wall. We had some trouble with Charles's power meter, and now we got good information. We want to try and steady your head a bit. And I see already that you've got it set up for a comfortable setup in stinks. Yes. The whole key with this posture is you're trying to keep your elbow in inside your quad. It's just to disappear this. How much percentage did I gain over there? We saw about a percent improvement in, in your coefficient of resistance. This is huge. So it's massive.